Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a couple of tips for groupings in WorkFront reports. Um, you'll see here I've already gone ahead and set up a, a task report, which is uh, one of the most common reports that you would create in WorkFront. Uh, so I went ahead and filtered that first. So I'll show you what the filters are set to. Uh, I've set this to pull uh, two different companies. Uh, tasks for this month. Um, so when you select that, um, you'll see here in the filter, it automatically adds in the code for today, beginning of month, and then today, end of month, uh, that the project status is some form of open and that the tasks are less than 100% complete um, are the filters I'm using for this one. So groupings for reports. Um, obviously, in a task report, you know, you're pulling within certain dates, you're pulling companies. That would particularly be how you would want to group things normally. Uh, if you're pulling in, you know, tasks for, you know, everyone who's working on what you're filtering. So we'll do a couple here. And one thing to note for groupings where They'll differ uh, from filters in that ID in a filter will then let you, you know, type out the name of the company. Whereas if you group by an ID, it tends to pull in the string of numbers associated with that object in Workfront um, versus grouping by the name. I'll show you. So for this example, it's filtered to two different companies based, um, which are added to the project details. So what we're looking to filter by is the project company. And so again, if I were to select ID here, it's going to pull in a string of numbers instead of, and I'll go ahead and save and close this, instead of the name of the project company itself. So you'll see here, the ID is going to pull in the workfront number associated with that object. So instead, you're going to want to search for project company name. You'll see that here. And then you can also add another grouping just within the, the standard grouping options. So if you just group it by company name, you'll see here, it'll pull the tasks in just based on the name. And since this report's pulling in tasks for the entire month, you may want to do a secondary grouping of looking at what's just for a particular week. So you can always add a secondary grouping. And that would be the planned completion date of the task is the due date. Um, so we have a lot of options, um, but we'll group it by the week since we know it's pulling in everything for the month already. And so that may give your users an easier view of seeing the tasks for which company and the week that they are due. So you can see here, it's all grouped out. So pretty easy with standard groupings for tasks. Uh, you could group it by who's assigned if you wanted to, uh, a few different ways. Uh, for common groupings uh, within a report. The other option for groupings is you'll see you can switch to this matrix grouping. This isn't really the best option for task lists because typically you're wanting your users to be able to click through to the task from the report itself. And so I'll show you what matrix grouping does. Um, 
So we'll we'll move the plan completion date over to be the column grouping so that the row will group it by the company and then the column will group it by the planned completion date. And we'll keep that at week. So let me show you here what this will do. Um, So it's going to default back to the details tab, and I'll show you how I can change that in the settings as well. Um, so when you look at the matrix grouping view, you'll see here that it'll do a record count. So you can't even click through to any of the tasks or anything like that in the matrix view for task reports. This is typically a better view if you're running hours reports. Um, then you can group it by the project company, by the assigned user who's logged the hours, uh, anything like that. You can use matrix groupings for it's really good for hours reports. But for task reports, you would typically want to stay on the details tab so that users can click through. So if you want to default to a particular tab when a project loads, what you can do is when you go to edit the report, you'll see on the far right, report settings. And so this is where you can add a description for your report. You can also run this report with the access rights of a particular person, especially for hours-based reports. Um, if a user leaving this blank uses it, runs the report with the access rights of whoever is logged in. So if they don't have access to a particular project, then they would need someone else's name or as, if, as long as you're an admin, you can add another, your own admin name or another admin if you, if you create a dummy one so that it pulls everything regardless of who's looking at it. But say you have a team member who they only work on one, two, three corp and not four, five, six, if they're running it on their end, they're not gonna see anything for four, five, six creative basics if they don't have access to that project. So that's just a little tip and trick there that you can set up a report to run with the access rights of a specific user so that people can see everything that they may need to see. Uh, but again, it'll default to being blank and it will just um, log with the user who's logged in. Um, how you can change the view for when it loads is right here when the report loads, show the details or matrix tab. Uh, I'll remove the, the matrix grouping, of course, but if you wanna make sure it defaults to load the details tab every time, you can also extend how many tasks it's showing when it loads on a dashboard because sometimes uh, it'll truncate it to 15. Some users don't look at the bottom that they need to drop it down to show more tasks. You can always extend the number of, of lines that are loading within a, a dashboard for your report as well. And then you can give access people uh, to people to change uh, the view, the group, and the filter themselves if you want. So if I save that, again, we made sure it defaulted to the details tab um, instead of going to that matrix tab, and you can always remove it. So those are just a couple of tips and tricks for grouping reports in Workforce.